it leaves the... I think my tripod is slowly canting over on me. Come and take it if you want it. Come and take it if you think you can. Come and take it, but I warn you, you'll have to pry it from my cold dick. All right, so let's try this one more time. So the first time we tried this, the uh, tripod decided to actually just start leaning to the side. And as I'm recording, I'm watching my tripod go, so that was great. So we'll try this for a second time here. So take two, all that good stuff. So what we've got in front of us is the uh, Remington 700 AAC SD model. This is the tactical model um, that everybody wanted for a long time. And these were really hard to get for a while. They're now they're a lot easier to find uh, than they were before when I when I originally got this uh, about a year or so ago. I haven't really done anything to it yet, but we're going to start a uh, custom precision rifle build. So this will be the first video. This will be kind of our baseline, what we're starting with, and then we'll kind of work into what we're adding to it. So let's kind of just go over the specifics. This is the uh, AAC SD model. Uh, this has the 20 inch bull barrel with the uh, pre-threaded 5 8 by 24 uh, threading with the thread protector. It has a 1 in 10 twist and if you don't know your twist rates, 1 in 10 means for every 10 inches of barrel, the bullet makes one full revolution. So in a 1 in 10 twist barrel on a 20 inch length, it means you're going to get two full revolutions of the bullet before it leaves the barrel. What it's, do, what it's going to do is it's going to give it better stability while it's flying down range. The normal or the norm or the more common is a 1 in 12 twist on uh, bolt action rifles and that's a little bit more common. This is specifically the 1 in 10 for that stability factor. Now this comes with the, uh, the Hogue over molded uh, in Gilly Green stock. It is pillar bedded uh, inside, in, the, uh, in the stock already so you don't have to do that. It is free floated. You can run a piece of paper down the length here, and the barrel is not touching the stock, the uh, the stock at all. And we'll see here. My cats are about to start fucking with the. Uh... Hey, get, get. So, all right. Now that we have uh, no more cat issues. So this is uh, the basic model. Um, this was the one that was really desirable for a while. Everybody wanted this model specifically for the barrel length, the bull barrel, the pre-thread. It's just a really nice gun overall. I've got some range time on it. Uh, I did take the uh, scope that was on it off because we're going to be using a different scope than what I was running. So we're going to build this out, but let's kind of just go over the basics here. So I've done a couple of things on it. Um, let me see if I get my notes. So twist, pillar bedded. Okay, this does come with uh, Remington's Xmark Pro Trigger. And it's supposed to come set at three and a half pounds. Bullshit. Bullshit. Okay, I put this thing on three different um, trigger pulls, trigger pullers, and all of them were reading anywhere between five and a half and seven pounds. There is no friggin' way this came out of the box three and a half pounds. That's just a crock of shit. Everyone I know that has an Xmark Pro trigger. There is no way you can get it tuned to three and a half pounds with that trigger and it does not come out of the box that way. That is a complete crock of shit. So Remington, thanks for fucking lying to everyone, but I already went and replaced my trigger. I'm actually running a Timney uh, 510, uh, one to four and a half pound trigger. I've got it set at two and a half pounds on the trigger pull now. And that is every time two and a half pounds. It is fantastic. It's crisp. It's awesome. I did stay with the uh, the curved trigger as opposed to their straight trigger. I just like this style a little bit more. Uh, I've already added a uh, bedded single piece 20 MOA weaver rail. So this has got your 20 minutes of angle cant, which allows you to go longer and uh, raise your optic more to be able to go shoot at longer distances with not as good an optic so this is the weaver i didn't you know spring for anything super expensive this is the weaver rail this is like 30 bucks off of amazon i did bet it so it is nice and flat on uh, both uh, connection points there so that gives you that added stability i did add a uh what's it called 
the KRG uh, Bolt Lifter, the Kinetic Research uh, Group, and that's kineticresearchgroup.com. Uh, this is just a screw-on uh, bolt knob. It just goes, it basically clamps over the original bolt handle and you put a screw in the bottom and it just clamps on there and it gives you a little more purchase area to pull uh, open your bolt if you're going to go open and close really fast. Instead of having to send out the, uh, the bolt to have it um, cut down and threaded and have a knob put on there, these are like 30 bucks plus shipping in that ballpark. All I did was order it, it showed up, put two washers in there on the uh, original bolt knob, screwed this on right here with the uh, Allen, Allen head screw that came with, and it has been great. I've had no issues with it. It doesn't move at all. It's nice and sturdy. I did go with the uh, Coyote Tan because the stock that we're going to be putting this into is Coyote Tan. So that's why you're like, well, why is there a tan bolt knob on a green gun? Well, it's not going to stay green, so there's a reason we went with the the tan. All in all, it's really nice. It's a really nice gun. Um, I really enjoyed everything about it except the trigger from the stock, the factory stock trigger. That was the only thing I was very unhappy with. Now this does have the uh, releasable floor, floor plate, so you can actually load your five rounds into the internal box magazine. And uh, if you need to release them out if you're shooting competition and you run out of time and you have to drop your rounds. You can just press a little button right here inside the trigger guard and it'll drop free out the bottom. And to get it back in, just press in, it slides up, and just click it in place. Now the only issue that I've actually had with this is uh, when I set this up and I put the Timney, Timney trigger in, Timney's not very good about explaining how to tune their trigger. So there's two screws in here in the Timney one-piece trigger that you put in. One actually has to do with this locking and locking the, uh, the uh, bolt so that it's actually in the firing position. The other one has to do with the weight of the actual trigger pull. So when you're doing that, be very, very careful. I didn't think to record when I put this in a while back but it's something you really want to make sure you take your time. Uh, there are some other videos out there. If I get around to it and I decide to retune the trigger when we go to put it in the new stock in the next video, I'll uh, maybe get a little video on what you're going to do and which way you go and what not to fuck with so you don't screw up like I did and then have to freaking call Timney and be like, well, what did I do wrong? So uh, this is just a, uh, a Caldwell um, three to three, uh, 6 to 9. Um, bipod. This is like the cheap 30 some odd dollar one I found at uh, Bass Pro Shop. I really haven't had too many issues with it. It does have a little bit more hop than uh, some of the nicer ones do, but I've just learned how to preload my uh, bipod so that I can uh, adjust down any of that issue. It's one of the things when you're buying all this stuff you got to figure out where you're spending the money now ultimately i do want to replace this with a uh, a much nicer harris bipod because i believe it'll give me a little more stability than this one does this one's a little flimsy so that'll be something we add into later overall length of the gun from barrel to stock is uh, about 39 and three quarters of an inch so just shy of 40 inches overall it's a, a nice length it's a good weight now the website says it weighs like three seven and a half pounds not really it's more on the lines of eight and a half or eight and a quarter pounds so they're a little off on their factory specs but i weighed it i came in right at about eight and a quarter pounds on this empty setup like this no rounds in it no scope on it now the barrel is made of a, a low carbon steel and it's hammer forged don't know what any of that means, but that's what I found online doing some research on it. So overall, it's a fun rifle. I got it for a really great price. I think I'm only about, the right here, I was only about $600 for this rifle stock out of the box. It was brand new from a guy who bought it and never used it. I picked it up off him off of uh, Gun Brokers here in Arizona. So I didn't have to deal with any you know shipping or anything. We just met up and I picked it up. Uh, again, the rail piece, the 20 MOA rail, those are about 30 bucks. The trigger is about 120. The knob lifter is about 30, and that's about 30. So 
another 200. So right here, we're looking at about 800 bucks. But I specifically spent a little more because I wanted this model with the bull barrel and the pre-threaded you know, end on it so I didn't have to go do any of that or spend any of that money. So right here, my investment is a sound one. So the next video, we're gonna be putting this into a uh, Accuracy, Accuracy International uh, AICS 1.5 stock. We've got a Millet uh, 4x16 uh, TRL1 or TSL1 or something like that uh, optic that's going to be going on this and we'll be going over how to mount your optic and all that good stuff. Now, inevitably, if you were going to mount the optic and be using this stock, you're going to need some kind of a way to heighten the comb, so you're going to need some kind of a padding here or uh, something to put on here to get your cheek weld a little higher because with this base uh, 20 MOA rail, you are actually bringing it a little higher up to start with. And then of course, if you're using mid-size rings, which are what I need, I have to use on the uh, optic I got because of the bell housing, this is very low. So you're either gonna be having a chin weld, which is gonna be a little negative for you in the long term, or you have to get a uh, butt pad here, protector here, and give you that cheek rest rise now, of course, we're not going to worry about that because we're going to a different stock. So in the next video, we'll be going over the stock that we're using. We'll be talking about the installation into the Accuracy International AICS 1.5 stock. And then uh, in the third video, we'll be mounting our optic. And then in the fourth video, we'll be going to the range. And we'll be sighting in the rifle at about 100 yards, probably just for a sight in and then we'll probably jump back to the 500 yard range that we have uh, right down the road from me here in Phoenix and uh, do a little bit of long distance fun shooting. So, all right, as for tonight, have a good night, Semper Fi, and we'll be back soon. So you best not cross that line. If you want this gun, you gotta come through us and take it. One shot at a time.